Hey there mortals, I'm Pruitt and this is Jim Davis and have we got a deal for you today. It is Faye Gone Wild. We got dancing dryads, the fairiest parties in the land, and you can't spell sin without centaur, am I right? Uh, no, wait. Don't get distracted, time's a-wasting, cause by the end of this video it's gonna be three days later, cause you travel through the Feywild with WebDM. Okay, Jim. We all know that the DMG says that the Feywild is a parallel land of magical chaos and whatever inhabited by fairies and dryads and treants and unicorns and centaurs and you probably don't want to make any deals or eat anything. You're probably not going to remember your time there and time works kind of weird. Yeah, I mean that pretty much covers it, right? That pretty much covers it. So <laughs> Please, let's move yeah. past that yeah. and let's, let's get some inspiration. How do you see the land of Fey? Like, in your mind's eye. In my mind's eye, the land of Fae has like is just like rich with uh with symbolism and and, and all these different it's very malleable both mm -hmm. from a narrative perspective, not just you know its sort of fictional qualities, but what you can do with it and how you can shape it. And because it's uh laced and just sort of riddled with all sorts of mythology and and meaning that you can go digging through, uh, it's really fascinating. There's a lot there. And I find the treatment of fairies and the Feywild to be refreshing in the sense that it's sort of like new to D&D still. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of these things, elements are sort of introduced in fourth edition, the, the sort of Feywild that we know now is gonna be introduced in fourth edition, borrowing from other planes. There's the beast lands, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in uh, on the outer planes, there's the positive energy plane, there's, the plane of fairy has always kind of been around, but I can't recall where its place is on the great wheel, just right. kind of like off the top of my head. So in terms of like the standard cosmology, it doesn't really have that kind of uh, place that say some of the other uh, planes have. Mm -hmm. But it's also could just as easily be wild places in our own world. Like the Feywilds presented a kind of a dark mirror or a wild mirror of our own, uh, yeah. you know, own surroundings. So yes, a, a, a place where men have not not right. uh, enforced their law and order. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Progress. In, in the, the scale of like cosmic law versus cosmic uh, chaos, it certainly falls within that chaotic, wild, mm -hmm. sort of untamed uh, kind of land. A lot of ways like it shares that quality with say, um, uh, Asgard on the Great Wheel, where where it's sort of like north of Limbo a little bit, yeah, <laughs> but yeah. still has that wildness to it. You know, the sort of the majesty that inspired say the national parks. Uh, in America, or or that kind of the, the movement at the turn of the last century, uh, of just sort of visiting these wonderful places that that uh, that are here, the like Grand Canyon or Yosemite or, or whatever it is, taking that sort of call to take in and soak in the majesty of nature mm -hmm. as being like the foundation for what fairy can be. I like when it's big and giant and and. Uh, you know, massive scale of it is what I like about the Feywild. I like that yeah. it's untamed. Yeah, it's a place you can get lost in. It, yeah. Uh, reminds me, like, a, what, uh, what was it called in Exalted? Like the Chaos Wild or something? I don't, I don't yeah. remember, but it, I, I just always remember that. It's like, you don't want to be there because it will change you. That kind of like melds into the magical part of it, right? Mm -hmm. Like, this is a land where the beings that live here are fundamentally different from you and I. They have different needs, and consistent time is not one of them. Yeah, you know, and and mount the malleableness of form and the malleableness of the laws of reality, with combined with sort of the unchanging nature of their personalities, their spirits, like Fey are kind of constant. Yeah, the, in their portrayals, you know. Yeah, the, their their <laughs> yes, their will is absolute. Not their, yeah, not necessarily their form. A lot of like takes on the Fey and, and fairies, and we'll get kind of back half of the episode be more about like who lives there, mm -hmm. uh, but does kind of play around with that immutable mixed with the mutable. Like one of my favorite takes on it is like you know what if fairies can't lie. You know, what if they're just incapable of it? Yeah. But they can obfuscate, they can, uh, you know, dodge and, and, you know, play defensive. Yeah, they can be obtuse. Yeah. Being obtuse isn't lying. No, no. <laughs> and they can omit specific. things, yeah. you know. They can just fail to tell you something. Uh, but a deliberate uh, falsehood is, is beyond them. Like, that's a pretty, you know, iron tight, you know, ironclad thing. That mixed with the fact that they can look like whatever they want or, mm -hmm. or can sort of change their form, especially if you're going with that, like, uh, the fair folk and their wild, uh, it's wild something in the Exalted Army. Could be mm -hmm. just the wilds. All of those can, you can find them in the Fey Wild, but you're right, man, we can dig a lot deeper and, and look at other inspirational sources and, uh, 
Get something that's really working for your table. Well, let's do that. Where would you like to begin? What what version of Fey do you like uh, to look at, like outside of? Outside D &D. of like the core D and D, but I'm still in the realm of D and D. I really like Kobold Press's take on the fairy, and and especially how like the Feywild and the Shadowfell sort of merge in the Shadow Fey that yeah. they have there, and and the fact that the different courts of the Fey are are geographic. Mm -hmm. So it's like the River King is specific to this part of the world, and yeah. the, the Queen of Air and Darkness is sort of like worshipped or observed or, or sort of like revered by these sorts of people. There's a witch, a queen of witches, uh, sort of a, an ogress uh, of a sort that I guess would compete with Baba Yaga because Baba Yaga is also in uh, Midgard, uh, Cobalt Press is Midgard. So I like that. And if you're looking for something that's like, I want something different than the Feywild, but I still want something that's very compatible with D&D that doesn't require a lot of work on my part. Like there's so many resources that they have. Uh, and I, I, I like a lot of them. They're really cool. Even just the stuff that's in like the Tome of Beasts and Creature yeah, Codex yeah. Uh, is very flavorful. Yeah, that uh, just just saying the word Agris just made me think of the Dark Crystal and Agra. <laughs> right. Because like, I mean, Dark Crystal is, I mean, that's some pretty Feywild stuff right there. It I really mean, is, you know, it really is. It, it's It's got this sort of magical quality to it. Mm -hmm. And especially the, sh the show, right? The series mm -hmm. where... How connected That's, they are to the land itself. And, yes. And yeah. uh, well, the corruption of one is the corruption of all. And, yeah. Yeah. Just uh, to, the inherent magic of it makes it a place that seems like fairy creatures live there. And of course, we're talking like puppets and, and sort of the, that <laughs> dark crystal. It's like the labyrinth. Labyrinth is like the goblin king and, and sort of like their realm mm -hmm. is classic fairy shenanigans, <laughs> yeah, especially yeah. dark fairy uh, kind of shenanigans. You really can't go wrong with... Uh, was a little goblin king in your uh, in your setting. <laughs> oh, definitely. And uh, not only that, just uh, what about the goblin market from uh, uh, Hellboy 2? Yeah. And, the, and yeah. that portrayal of like the elves and fairy. Uh, I mean, yes. it, that was, I, I don't, I've i heard some people kind of poo-poo that, that, yeah, that movie. Yeah, and I'm yeah, just sure. like. There were parts of that movie that I felt were really evocative and like mm -hmm. so D&Dable. Inscrutable alien elves. Mm -hmm. You know, the sort of like elf type fey, Eldrin, uh, you might call them. It's got the goblin market with its, you know, <laughs> Star Wars cantina-like array of mm -hmm. different uh, fey monsters and the like. The goblin market is one of those things that I love about fairy stories and fairy tales. And I think another one appears in Stardust, that Neil Gaiman mm -hmm. uh, 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 graphic novel, and then they made a movie out of it too. I love the idea of a place where you go to find weird things and have to give weird things as well. Like the yeah. currency here is maybe memories you may or may not, uh, you know, a bond that you share with someone else. Uh, they're gonna eat away at that. Or maybe you, they get to wear your face for a day or mm -hmm. they get possession of your shadow uh, once a year or something like that. Just something weird that's like, oh, this isn't gonna be a problem, you know, or, yeah. or how could this even become a problem? Yeah, use your face for a day, but in fairy, how long is the day last? How long is that gonna last? Yeah. When you yeah. sign the contract, a day <laughs> technically lasts about a decade. Yeah, and during that time, you're you're trapped in a mirror or something like that. Mm -hmm. Or they shrink you down to the size of a cricket and put you or in you a little bamboo cage. Yeah. You, <laughs> or you just don't have a face. Yeah. You just don't have a face. You're the man without a face. <laughs> right. You just <laughs> sit there blind and faceless. Mm -hmm. um, you don't need to breathe. You don't need to eat. <laughs> but you can't talk. You can't see. Sure, yeah. Right next to them, they're selling like barbecued grubs or, or something like that or snake tail soup or something. You know, it's goofy. It's wacky. Mm -hmm. It has the potential to be dangerous. Yeah, yeah. And you, it's eminently useful for a dungeon master in like hiding MacGuffins, clues, mm -hmm. contacts. So it's as a as a location. If you're looking for like, oh, where's one place I can send someone in the, in the realm of fairy? Like a goblin market is one of those things, and it could easily be a goblin market is also a fey crossing. Yeah. Right. You know, a goblin market might be, oh, yeah, there's a black market over here where the thieves guilds do their business. But if you go down that alley, take the third left. And mm -hmm. then, you know, walk down these steps. It's going to be a creaky door. But, you know, open it. Don't, you know, turn the, the, the knob of it. Witter shins and, and this. And it's going to open all, backwards on its hinges. And if you say the thing, you know, be there. And then you're in the market. And it's like, I like everyday magic that doesn't require a spell slot to access. Yeah. And, and fairy and the goblin market sort of promise that. They're like, you need some magic? You want some dangerous magic? You, you know, mm -hmm. do you need you need something that goes boom? You need that good magic, baby? <laughs> right. I got it for you. So yeah, the goblin market's kind of like that uh, and is contrasted with like the natural splendor mm -hmm. of the most of the Feywild. I think uh, an amazing representation of fairy is in most Miyazaki. 
Oh yeah. Right. Yeah, I yeah. mean, if you're talking about Princess Mononoke, the encroachment of man into the wilds and yes. the freaking forest king and the holy crap, like that yeah. is that is a place like before, you know, if if if, if most of the time, you know, the Fey Wild is is a parallel land that mirrors yeah. the, the 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 terrain, but in different ways. Like this is before they split. Sure. Right. Yeah. This yeah. is before they the, the Fey were driven out yeah. of you know by the humans in their wood town and steel town or whatever. Oh, yeah. When well, you look into sort of like what the Fey represent, what are they? And sometimes mm -hmm. they're like spirits of the dead. Sometimes they're spirits of nature. You know, this is, there's all kinds of explanations for them where specifically fairy kind of crop up. And the idea that like they're part of the world and are slowly retreating from it, slowly being separate from it, the landscapes changed mm -hmm. as fields become enclosed, as woods are chopped down and, and you know, new pasture land is, uh, is cleared. There's all these kinds of things happen. The wild places of the world shrink smaller and smaller and smaller. Now, eventually you get it on a global scale, but you know, D&D &D works better on the local level. So it's like, you know, what happens to these inherently natural and magical places that in a D&D &D world might be counterimonious, it might be one and the same, when the mechanization comes, <laughs> yeah. when, in, you know, whatever passes for, uh, you know, kind of like the separation from the natural world in, in your own campaigns comes, like, do they fight back? Are they there to, to protect these places? Are they rendered powerless? in some ways. Um, I'm thinking of, of, there's some really cool quests in Witcher 3 where the nature spirits are, are mad because the villagers have done something to make them mad, mm -hmm. you know? And, and you've got to call in someone to make this right, uh, either through violence or, or just talking to people. And okay, so, I can't remember the, the character's name, the little boy who liked to do the tricks. The godling. The little, little godling, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That, was, that was a lot of fun. Like them or the Leshen or some of the others. And, mm -hmm. and oddly enough, those are, in, you know, that that game and that sort of world takes inspiration from what we would maybe call like Slavic fairies. Yeah. <laughs> and instead of using fairies from, say, the British Isles and the like, just like going elsewhere and finding those spirits of the land and spirits, nature, spirits of the dead that uh, get turned into fairy tales. And of course, when D&D &D gets a hold of them, they sanitize the whole thing it's bleached and processed and game stats are put forward and it's put in the system of alignment and mm -hmm. it takes something that's mystical and magical and full of symbolism and and in that symbolism you can evoke all of these kinds of experiences by their use and renders it sterile a thing to be fought worth xp that has this save bonus and and that kind of thing and they can't be charmed and they can't be charmed and you know whatever and so this is why i and when as a dungeon master i'm looking for inspiration i do so much like looking into the origins of words and legends and things like that to try to get to uh the place where these concepts originated because that's where there's life there there's mm -hmm. there's people's real fears about the natural world about living in this environment that's there and like that's where really cool <laughs> tension can come from. It's where interesting situations and, dare I say, narrative moments uh, can mm -hmm. come from. So. Oh my. If we're still kind of hanging, hanging around uh, some great inspiration, Legend of Korra. Mm. I think it's uh, season two or three, the spirit season. Sure, yeah. yeah. Uh, where you get to learn the origin of it the Avatar. It must be two, because I've only seen the first one of those. There's a great season where it's all about the spirit world. Right, right, and right. And somebody's trying to bring the spirit world back to the prime material. Yeah. And she's trying to stop it, and you get to learn the origins of all that, why they split. Right. And it's just it's just rife with inspiration yeah, for different certainly. kinds of fae. I mean, they have everything from just little like yellow blobs to like cat-faced mm -hmm. weird people that screw with you no matter what. Um, it's why uh, the humans were first gifted the elements so they could right. go out and hunt and fight off the fae. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 a great uh, it's a great look at uh, what it would be like to actually have to live in, a world, in the fae world like that. because yeah. the world hasn't been tamed yet, and all the humans live on the backs of the giant dragon turtles. <laughs> if the landscape's mutable and hostile, then mm -hmm. yeah, you you could you would see that. And I I love that. I love the I, I love playing around with the boundaries between these categories in D and D and shifting fae into elemental spirits or just spirits in general. I think are one of the, the more interesting things you can do with them because like in our own world, so much religious practice, so much spiritual practice is based around this idea that spirits surround us everywhere, that, that the universe is alive with numinous beings that we can't see, but we can affect and, and, and placate and who can affect us. And maybe they're our ancestors, maybe they're supernatural beings, maybe they're nature spirits, something, but like 
so much of it is when you look at it, it's like well we do this to like keep these spirits happy mm -hmm. or to honor these spirits or to stave off the bad things that they might do all oh, the shamanism and 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 sort of uh druidic uh, practice as well like all of these things are part of the spirit world and yet when you look for them in dnd they're often absent yeah and religion and 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 sort of uh spiritual practice in in, in a lot of fantasy worlds is very sterile uh, as well, and this is one of those places we can come back. Who keeps track of all these spirits in D and D? Does anybody care? <laughs> like, is anybody worried about what that river's doing mm -hmm. and the nymph or Nixie or whoever that 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 lives there and controls its waters and and the like? You know, is that the providence of uh, rangers and druids and those sorts of uh, uh, professions, classes in the world? All of these questions, when you start taking them seriously and answering them, you're going to have a world that's like interwoven. <laughs> Yeah, And like, these aren't just dryads in a monster manual. These are the dryads of this wood in particular. And they have these names and these, these are the rituals and, and the like that, that you use to placate them when you need to go into the forest and take some wood yeah, out. <laughs> so they don't kill you. You need to appease them and don't get caught by them because they'll just keep you as a pet. Yeah, the tree was their friend that you cut down. Right. <laughs> yeah, they don't see you. I like, you know, they don't see you as a living being with agency. They see you, and they see you as the same. They see everything else as part of the natural world, as part of this order. And so, like, yeah, who cares? You came in here. I'm just going to keep you. For mm -hmm. all, it'd be handy to have man around the house. I love this idea of the blurring lines there, and I think that both uh, Last Avatar and uh, the Korra seasons and and uh, Spirited Away, Princess Mononoke have this great way of presenting something that's familiar in a very different way yeah. make it evocative well yeah and another one uh, we talk about all the time <coughs> is dresden it's it's a great meshing of pretty much all oh like, yeah he tries to squeeze everything's in, in there <laughs> all of the myths yeah. all the, the the fairy tales definitely and it's all part of the never never and you still have tatiana and mave the the, the queens of summer and, and santa winter. claus santa the claus the earl king, king. Yeah, all that uh, all of the billy uh, the three goats Groat Groat <laughs> i mean like who wouldn't yeah. want to look just go read it just go, go read, read it, it. go uh, check them out yeah it's, they're great because they are like a total system and there's this cosmic war that goes on and then you learn later like the next layer of that that goes on and i'm assuming there's a layer beyond that <laughs> you know every oh, yeah oh, every yeah. few books they they up the ante to uh you know sort of because i don't know dresden keeps leveling up you know i mean he keep, <laughs> I, I would say he's at least uh third third going on fourth tier at least yeah, at least at least third. uh but yeah it's getting pretty pretty freaking yeah. cosmic at this point yeah yeah and you've I've been to the edge of the one. universe or whatever, or, or, yeah, <laughs> the yeah. edge of reality. <laughs> you see it as, okay, it starts as these are fairies, right? He's feeding them pizza in an alleyway. Yeah, he's tricking little tiny things, yeah, little, little tiny. fairies right. into giving him, just being a, a snitch, being yeah, an informant. Yeah, tell me what's going on around here. And incorporating all of these myths and legends into it and fitting them into what feels like a very mythic system because it's built around sort of seasons and these two opposing courts except we find out that that's not really the case because each of the courts has these multiple levels and they don't mm -hmm. all agree mm -hmm. and then there are free agents who are <laughs> mm -hmm. in play here and it becomes a very complicated thing and and it really touches on that that part of the fey that i think a lot of uh, more modern fantasy really embraces which is the the court intrigue yeah of the fey the fact that go coming here is like walking into a giant murderous play yeah. <laughs> and you don't know what your role is you don't know who who or what your role is things are happening and it's like i why is that person being taken away what's going on but you know it, it's almost like the uh <laughs> the ultimate in a, a, a social anxiety exercise <laughs> mm -hmm. like you have no idea of what you're going to say is going to set these people off and they're going to go crazy and, and yeah. do something terrible to you yeah jonathan strange and mr norrell is a great it's uh, a great example of that as well. yeah there's a malice and a menace there that's not like de demons can't help themselves yeah a demon is rage and and fury and and just raw destructive emotion and, and the like and, and and devils you know they have their own problems but like the fey, it's like you could, you 
could probably do something. You don't have to do this, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, you don't have to trick us like this. Any other classic portrayals of the, the fairy and the kind of the place that they live? I know that... Well, Alice in Wonderland. I mean, come Alice on. Alice in Wonderland is certainly a great And then one. a takeoff of that that I love to think about. Yeah. The cyberpunk version of that, which is The Matrix. Yes. The Matrix yeah. is, a, is a fairy land. It's, it is a digitally created fairy land. I mean, yeah. there's the, all the old monsters yes. that are there. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, it's, it's the same kind of, you know... Agent Smith is the regulatory agency. Yep. Uh, yeah. the, 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 the Fey guards that are come after you because you are not supposed to be here. <laughs> You're not here. supposed to be here. Yeah. Yeah. He's the, uh, the you know, the guardsman of the, the Earl King, you mm -hmm. know, the huntsman, uh, as it were. And if you think about it in terms of what they could potentially do, what the creator, what the architect uh, could potentially do with the Matrix, all of the mutability, death. yeah, all of the <laughs> all of the forms that that mutate and, and change and everything could be present in that. And you can even imagine like the previous iterations, the Matrix looked more and more like Fairy, and those were the times where the people were rebelling and like, oh, we can't take this. So they're like, all right, we'll just create something that looks like home to you, yeah. you know, uh, and it's really super boring and just expansive explore the city never ends i love the idea of the matrix as a fairy land mm -hmm. and and of it of it containing sort of these atavistic vestigial spirits that like at one point were a part of the order of the world but are now not <laughs> and they're just decadent and around they still have uh you know the power within them they're still personally kind of potent but their place in the cosmos has been you know, usurped it's it's mm -hmm. they're you know they're rudderless as it were uh, listless in a sea of reality that kind of touches on the encroachment of civilization and the ousting of of fairies as a uh you know as sort of a metaphor and a central conflict in your campaign and that plays out in say ice and fire a song of ice and fire oh, yeah, first the children. Men, children of forest yeah. even though you could look at them as like okay those are elves or or other types of fairy it's pretty clear that this you know they're they're caught up in this cosmic level conflict the cycle of history that keeps repeating mm -hmm. part of the world but they're getting pushed out so mm -hmm. there's so many places to draw oh uh, yeah draw I mean, there's tons from. i mean hell uh, uh land of oz certainly yeah like why isn't that like a fairy land it's certainly, got witches yeah. it's yeah. got you know it's it has all the hallmarks it's got all of it yeah the the the, the trees are attacking uh -huh. if you go through it and you try to eat their fruit right uh there's living <laughs> scarecrows i mean you know uh, who, who knows all kinds of things uh, yeah um also predator too uh king like willie he I looks like into the spirit one. world he he thinks that the predator comes from the other side the spirit yeah, world does. i mean you know i'm just saying he uh, does yeah and i i, I like predator. so predator two uh predator's fairy all right yeah um yeah but that's a bug bear. he's the earl king media inspirations are great for that pan's labyrinth would be another one oh, just like pan's the way Lab the insects yeah. look i like going and looking and seeing like okay where do these ideas come from where can i find is there anywhere where they originated anywhere yeah. where they sort of filled their world with spirits mm -hmm. to to sort of like give explanation for things or to entertain themselves yeah. or because they were scared or whatever yeah. why did the rivers run dry oh yeah, yeah. obviously there yeah. was a, a spirit that was pissed off at us <laughs> you go back far enough and you start seeing things where like the words elf and dwarf are just words for magic things you know mm -hmm. like, like dwarf talk uh is is just sort of the word for magical speech or or elf or elfin being words used to just describe magical and weird and wonderful things that are also kind of terrible and unexplainable it's not a you know it, it comes down to us in the 20th and 21st century as this being that's kind of superior to us in many ways but also not as adaptive and a lot of that's influenced by Tolkien, but these are the sources that influenced Tolkien. Mm -hmm. And so to me, it's kind of like, I'm gonna go back, <laughs> I wanna go back further. The house fairy, the domestic spirit, mm -hmm. the the tiny little the hairy Dobby. man, the Dobby, the <laughs> yeah. Domovery, or how, I forget how they're pronounced, like the 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 spirits of the of the hearth, the Lares and the Pinites and the uh, whatever, the uh, Roman religion, are all sort of similar kinds of creatures and some of them are like the spirits of your dead ancestors that are still living around the house mm -hmm. and like fairies as it's a terrifying thought it really me. right <laughs> but like there's a lot of fairy uh types of fairies that are just spirits of the dead uh banshee would be uh would be kind of type of like uh, a creature like that but there's um a type of norse fairy i believe it's like their concept for dwarves the idea is they're maggots crawling through the corpse of the world giant that makes up Midgard. Right. You know, it's like they are they are these chthonic earthly 
uh, sort of like creatures of, of death, things of the earth, metals and, and the like, but they're also greedy and, and sort of caricatures of old men and, oh, and yeah. bitter and bitter just, miserly you know, like, old men. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like how many of these fairies end up looking like the looking like sort of a, uh, what I imagine would be like the village archetype of like, oh, not these people again. Oh, they're just like those fairies that are around over, you know, over in those mounds across the dell. The fairies who are, uh, you know, masquerade themselves as bathing maidens, but are actually rotting corpses that are trying to drown you. Uh -huh. uh, would be another kind of uh, example of that crossover between enticing fairy, menacing undead. And the lines are blurred. That's where magic happens. And so I like having yeah, yeah. Uh, those kinds of... Uh, I don't have to justify it to you people. Anyway. Yeah, you don't have to justify it <laughs> Jim. Like you said, you like you like having a look back. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is, is there anything in particular? Uh, any, uh, any piece of... <sighs> <laughs> anything yeah. yeah yeah i uh so when when you go looking for uh for like the origins of words and things like that there's a great book called the denim tracks and it's a uh free for uh you know anybody can read it but it has a piece from an even earlier book written in 1584 called the discovery of witchcraft and it is a description of the types of fairies found in the English countryside at, this is 1584, so it's the, we're getting towards the end of the Renaissance, we're right into the, at the cusp of the early modern era, which if you know your history, is when people started seeing witches everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's really one of those things where it's like, in the Middle Ages, yeah, there were some witch hunts, uh, like, but you know, it isn't until the printing press and uh -huh. we start experimenting with, uh, you know, the classical education and we're almost about to start the scientific revolution. There's just like, there's fucking witches all over the place. Gasp of mysticism. Right. This is from uh, the, not yeah, the <laughs> not quite. We still, you know, there's a few more gasps. Come on, last gasp on this flat earth. Sorry, hollow uh, earth. It's hollow flat uh, earth. This hollow flat uh, disc. It's like Swiss cheese. Slots. Yeah, easily. Yeah. Well, that's another one, the cheese and the worms. Yeah. <laughs> so this is from the discovery of witchcraft, 1584. Form. What a happiness this must have been 70 or 80 years ago and upwards to those chosen few who had the good luck to be born on the eve of this festival of all festivals, when the whole earth was so overrun with ghosts, boggles, bloody bones, spirits, demons, ignis fauti, brownies, bugbears, black dogs, specters, shelly coats, scarecrows, witches, wizards, bar guests, robin goodfellows, hags, night bats, scrags, breaknecks, Phantasm, hobgoblins, hobelards, boggy bows, dobbies, hobthrusts, fetches, kelpies, <laughs> warlocks, mock beggars, mum pokers, jimmy birdies, urchins, satyrs, pans, fawns, sirens, tritons, centaurs, calgars, nymphs, imps, incubuses, <laughs> sporns, men in the oak, hellwains, fire drakes, kid can sticks, torn tumblers, <laughs> milk dicks, <laughs> Jim, this is, this, is a, this, is a, this is a family show. <laughs> Hobby Land, this goes on and on. Yeth Hounds, Mormos, Colty Pixies, Tom Thumbs, Boggarts, Scarbugs, Shagfoles, Hodgepokers, Hob Thrushes, Bugs, Bull Beggars, Fly Boggarts, Fiends, Galley Trops. <laughs> anyway, it goes on for a considerable length of time. There's a uh, lot of fair, like, I'm sorry, but mum yeah. pokers and bog pokers? Yeah, yeah, and Jenny fetches, uh, <laughs> including hobbits. This is one of the first recorded uh, terms of where they actually uh, uh, call something a hobbit, although I have skipped past that. Uh, gnomes, sprites, fates, fiends, sibyls, nicknames, uh, fairies, <laughs> cuties, or cutties, nisses, and apparitions of every shape, make, form, fashion, kind, and description that there was not a village in England that had not its own particular ghost, nay, every lone tenement, castle, or mansion house which could boast of any antiquity had its boggle, its specter, or its knocker. And it's just like, that is the world we made up for ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> without any of this being real. <laughs> yeah. We can do better in our D&D &D worlds yeah. when it comes to this kind of thing. And like, the worlds of D&D &D are rife with these kinds of magic creatures and their relationship to magic, to mortals, to each other, to the other kinds of creatures that are in the world deserve some thought. And that is uh, all I have to say on the subject right now. If you like the video, please like, subscribe, and go ahead and ring that bell to get those notifications. The Web DM exists thanks to our Patreon patrons, the, the Web, Web Demons. Demons. 
If you join the Web Demons, you'll get our weekly podcast, show audio, discounts that'll save you way more than $5 a month on books and dice, and so much more. Check out our free podcast episodes right now, including our free interview with Luke Gygax about all things D&D. If you like our advice for your games, then why don't you come check us out and watch us play? Yeah, head on over to our second YouTube channel, WebDM Plays, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.